Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habit fillah Previously, I mentioned uh, or had a little, did a video about uh, the issue of taqlid and perhaps it might have been pertaining to a question that my, that was asked and with regards to that I've been uh, someone sent a very beneficial short treatise if you will about the issue of taqlid the issue of blind following and it was very beneficial and I think that what they understood from me is that I was saying that taqlid uh, is permissible in all circumstances and the articles that they sent were very had a very strong position and and nice narrations from the from the um, the cl many classical scholars uh, with regards to the issue and, and some of the Salaf <clears throat> and what's very important it just as I was reflecting this morning and I just picked up a very beneficial book not meaning I just bought it, but I just picked it up off of my shelf. And it is a, sh uh, a book by uh, Sheikh uh, Wasiyallah Abbas, half of Allah Ta'ala, one of our Mashaikh, major Mashaikh in Mecca. And it's about this issue of, in fact, the title of the book is called Taqlid wa Hukmuhu fi Do al Kitabi wa Sunnah wa Athar al Salafiyah. And so it's about the issue of Taqlid. And in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. And so I was also reflecting, my position has not changed at all, and I said what I said in the past, and I'll reiterate it so that it's a little bit clearer, that a lot of these Messiah, there, there is tafsil, there are details, meaning a lot of issues that we see, and especially in the Western world, if you don't know Arabic and you haven't done any studying, you see things very black and white. And you may take a, a, a statement of an alam, but you don't really know the context. And perhaps maybe there's another, quote, there's another statement as well, another viewpoint from ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Perhaps, so these are, those are two different issues in fact. One is that you take the statement of one alam and he may, you know, he has done his homework and he has this position. And so you take that position. And you don't have the background, so you don't know there's other position. In fact, his position could be a minority position or opinion. So this is the point bringing us back to the fundamentals, which is that we need ilm. And I want to encourage you, uh, as I have in the past, to continue, and I will continue to do, is to seek Islamic knowledge. That nothing will give you the light and the guidance and the clarity uh, in your religion and in your dunya than Islamic knowledge, than sound Islamic knowledge and going back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And the more you study, and if, if Allah favors you to study uh, in some of the, you know, maybe in a, and it could be in an official setting, like in a university or something, or unofficial, the formal uh, way of the Salaf, for example, the way they do in Yemen or just studying in a masjid in, in places in many countries around the world or even here in Saudi to study with the Mashaykh directly uh, instead of a program. However Allah favors you, the more you gain in knowledge, it should give you more, uh, a broader understanding of a lot of these Masail, uh, whether it be Aqidah and whether it be uh, whether it be furur, as some of them refer to, meaning the issues of fiqh and mu'amalat and, and so on and so forth. And so, the knowledge is a tool to help you to distinguish truth from falsehood. It also can help free you from always being at the mercy of taqlid, of blind following. And for example, let's talk about how fitna erupts in our countries and for example this is amongst the Salafis we're not even talking about the non-Salafi communities but amongst the Salafis and unfortunately we have tons of fitna and a new fitna every week we have a new sheikh talking about this one and people running across the band uh, on the, to jump on the bandwagon and tearing apart communities around the planet the 
one who has some knowledge, they can look at the Messiah. Hopefully they have something, a way to make tesor of the issue for one and see if it's even a relevant issue. Number one. Number two, they have the tools to maybe be able to look into the issue if it is relevant to then, therefore, take a knowledge-based position. But the ones who are at the mercy of taqlid, of blind following, maybe not even blind following the mashaykh, the mashaykh issue a hukum, and then they have to have it translated for them, and then they make taqlid of the people, the translators, who may not even give them dalil. So now I've gotten off topic, I wanted to really talk about taqlid, but those are some of the harms of not having knowledge and being at the mercy of taqlid. What I said prior to this, and, and so I'm going to make it ikhtasar, because there's so many narrations we could talk about, the a'imma, the four a'imma, Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, uh, Shafi, Imam, Ahm, and Imam Malik, and Imam Ahmed, all of the a'imma, they have beautiful statements. Let's just read one statement of Imam uh, Abu Hanifa really quickly so we can affirm what I'm saying is true. And you'll find also Imam al-Abani in his book, uh, Sifat al-Salat, uh, he also brings these narrations. And uh, Imam Wasi Allah Abbas, he also shows that he made knuckle or he took it from uh, uh, Imam al Albani, but he does the checking and, and, and gives you some, you know, whether it's authentic and, and, and so on and so forth. But one of the statements he m mentions of Imam, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. And I can't find it right now, but he's but this is attributed to Imam Abu Hanifa Min Saha uh in Saha al Hadith Buhua Madhabi or Kamak or Kamaqil. That if a hadith is found, then that is my madhab. And then there are many statements of the A'imma that they say not to blind follow them. So we know the issue of taqlid, but here let's get some of that tafsil so we can we can get into this. And I'm sorry for taking so long. I just wanted this to be like a two minute uh, discussion, but unfortunately, uh, that's not always the case and not always easy to do. Bil ikhtisar, Sheikh Allah Abbas, I just want to mention this because I, I, I'm going to try not to make it a long discussion, but he mentions that people are of three types uh, according to following the statements of the uh, the imams. He said, Al ulama kibar ma'rufun fil umma bil mujtahideen. Uh, that the, there's the major scholars that are known uh, in the Ummah as being those who can make ijtihad. You know, they can, they know the text and they know the usul and they can make fatwa and they, you know, can uh, uh, have a share in ijtihad. They can make uh, juristic reasoning from the, uh, from the text and make fatwa when, when something is not clear uh, you know, about its hukum, its ruling from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, meaning it's a new issue, whatever the case may be. Then he said, mentions the ulama al-mutawasitun. He mentions the second category is the middle uh, scholars, the scholars who are in the middle, that they are grounded maybe in tafsir, and they have different levels in hadith and aqidah, and they also can have the ability to look in the adillah, uh, the evidence and distinguish whether it's sound or it's not authentic. And then the third group is the uh, he mentions is the Ahmed and Nas, the 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 uh, the general people, the lay persons. Then he mentions he mentions that the first group, which is those major scholars that we mentioned, he said it's not permissible that for them to make taqlid of anyone. And then he said, illa ida ajaza an ma'rufatul hukum fi ba'd al this is very important because some of the people have a very black and white issue of this. So here's what our Sheikh, uh, 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 Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas mentions. He mentions that first categories. These are the major scholars. So in our time, for example, in the Saudi Arabian context. Now, there's major scholars around the world. But I just know I'm, I'm familiar more with Saudi Arabia because this is where I live. And my tarbiyah and learning of Islam has been predominantly here. For example, somebody like Sheikh... Uh, uh, the Mufti, or uh, Imam Fozan, and scholars like this, and Luhaydan, and, and these major scholars, and Imam uh, Abdul Masan al Abad, and, and others. That these scholars, uh, he says, that it is not permissible uh, for them to make taqlid unless they have, do not have the ability, you know, or, or either not the ability, 
or the it could actually the edges could be in time or whatever to look in the look into a particular issue, uh, you know some masail. So then he says fajazalohu and yuqalid mensha, and then he mentions the rest. So then it's permissible for them to make taklid of whoever they uh, they wish with regards to those issues. And this is my position that there's tafsil. Some of the people have a very black and white. Thing. They say no taklid is muharram at all, but I don't think you, I don't even see how you can really realistically practice that, and I'm going to tell you why right here. The second uh, group he mentions, the second group is that's that the ulama, the mutawasatin. He said they're like the other ones, also not permissible for them to make taklid, uh, you know, and that they should know the fatwa of the ulama and with dalil and so on and so forth, so forth. And again, it comes to edges if they do not have the ability. Or the uh, or the time to look into every issue, then they can just take the the call of an alam, okay, and an an alam that they respect and that they know is known for their adherence to the book in the sunnah. So it's very important that we understand that there are exceptions, and this is what we're talking about. We're not saying that you should follow a madhab blindly, no, especially with regards to uh, adilla. But we're talking about that these issues that you that there are times, for example, the lay persons. If I say to you, hadith such and such, you will not be able to distinguish whether it's sahih or da'if, but instead you're going to rely, and especially if you don't know the Arabic language, you're going to rely on what's translated for you from maybe perhaps Imam al-Albani, who in this science, you know, <laughs> Imam Ahl hadith in this time, you know, you know, he's a, a great Imam in the hadith sciences and a, a great Imam of Ahl Sunnah in this time, one of the greatest. And so, Rahmatullah uh, Alayhi Wasiya. So, again, you're going to rely, oh, and you hear this all the time from ulama, and especially ulama that this is not their fin, this is not their science, they don't specialize in hadith. How many ulama they just say, Sahahu al Labani, Imam al Labani said it's Sahih, or he said it's Hassan, or he said it's Da'if and Silsila Da'ifa. Okay, that is a no minute taqlid because they may not even have came across his discussion of why and went into the dalil because Imam al-Bani himself is not dalil, but instead they relied upon him. And this is the case with many things. And so, of course, for the general Muslims, this applies that they can't look in, they don't have the ability. Let's look at what Shaykh al-Islam, we're going to end quickly. They're calling me Adhan and I have to go. He, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, he said, talking about the ulama, he said, وَالَّذِي عَلَيْهِ جَمَاهِرُ الْأُمَّةِ And the ijtihad jayiz fi jumla, wa taqlid jayiz fi jumla. That ijtihad is, is permissible uh, 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 in general, and taqlid, or, or uh, in, in si some situations, and taqlid in some, or in general, or in some situations. And then he mentions the, uh, the issues and the shahid, or the main point, is showing that it's, uh, here's the last statement. He says, Wal taqlid jayiz lil ajiz. And I'm just going to stop there. So, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, taqlid is permissible for the one who does not have the ability. Meaning they don't have the ability to go to the books. They don't have the ability or the time to go into every mas'ala. So they rely on the statement of someone who they believe to be uh authentic and adhering to uh, the book and the sunnah and the way of the salaf. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.